like if you look at the, the students who are in school now, down to middle school, so sort of the next tranche of folks who will be coming to us, mm -hmm. our summer interns, right. they're interested in even something a little bit different, which is something more focused on uh, social good and social entrepreneurialism and social mm -hmm. capitalism. And that's where our mission really, I think, yeah. helps us yeah. and puts us in a good position. Welcome to the Nuco Shift Dialogues, where we speak with leaders in business, government, and media the people on the front lines of the greatest shift in business since the Industrial Revolution. When Lori Guller first started at Facebook, the company had just 500 people. Eight years later, Guller is now the head of people at Facebook, in charge of growing, developing, and retaining a team of more than 15,000. We asked Guller to help us understand how Facebook became, in the words of employment site Glassdoor, the happiest place to work. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming. Um, I want to start with, you have kind of a great story about how you ended up at Facebook. Uh, can you tell us that story? Sure, sure. So I've worked in tech for a while. And uh, one morning, actually I was working in a marketing role prior to coming to Facebook. And one morning on my commute to work, heard an interview of Mark talking about the mission of Facebook. And of course, I knew Facebook because you know it was a great way for us to reach, at that time, the college College what, audience. What year was this? That was in 2007. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I thought, that sounds really interesting. I love the social mission of Facebook. It sounds really interesting. And you know, maybe sort of tucked it away in the back of my head if there were ever an opportunity. And then the following spring, Cheryl Sandberg said that she was headed to Facebook. And I noticed. And I thought, well, that must mean that they're turning attention towards the business side. And maybe I'll just give her a call and see what they need. And so I called and asked her what her biggest issue was on the business side and whether it was anything I might be able to help with. And she said, yes, it's recruiting. Can you come help us with the recruiting? Which was not what I expected her right. to say at the time. Yeah. And the company was about 500 people at the time, so it's been a lot of growth since then. Well, in, into the thousands, uh, I think. The about 15,000 now, 15,000, yes. so that's significant growth. It is. You know, you didn't have the specialized knowledge of you know, decades of, of, of human resources management. Um, what was the challenge, you know, when there were 500 people and you guys were growing at, at, at what I must have been a torrid pace? Well, you know, I think there were several, there were several things. Of course, one was just building for scale. But one was something I was already familiar with, which was marketing. How do you get the word out about what it's like to work at Facebook? You know, what we found was that people, when they came to our offices to meet with us, were really excited about what we were doing and what the mission was and about working with the fantastic people who were there. But we hadn't yet gotten the word out about what it meant to work at Facebook, which helped us in the scaling. It helped right. us to tell a story. And of course, you know, in marketing, it's the same thing. You want to identify your audience and your target customers. You want to understand what their needs are. And this role is very similar to that, you know, a different target audience, right. different customers. But large part of my role is understanding what our people want, what's important to them and what's meaningful. I, I can only imagine you didn't have a problem with the volume of people who would have loved to work at a place like Facebook. I mean, it was sort of, and still is, like seen as the pinnacle of a tech company that you can work at that has massive impact and massive scale. How do you find the right people? Is there some approach that you take that's unique? We are really looking for builders because we consider ourselves at the very beginning of our journey. We always say our, uh, you know, we're 1% done on this journey. And what that means is that we're looking for people who have shown that they love to build things, who will come in, they'll look at something that we're working on or something that we need to build, and they'll think, that works pretty well, but I bet it can be even better. Mm -hmm. And they'll set about trying to do that. And of course, what goes along with that is a learning mindset. You really need people who are open to learning, who, you know, in this world, which is evolving, it's different every day. People need to be able to use what they've learned in the past and really build on it, mm -hmm. rather than just staying at a steady state. Right, right. Now, I've been to Facebook many times. Uh, I know you guys don't necessarily uh, you know, release the average age of everyone that works yes. there, or <laughs> those kinds of statistics. Not many companies do, but, you, but it is quite clear just from looking around the place that they're young. Um, on, on average, you know, it feels to me in the late 20s. Um, that's a 
unique group of people, um, the, the largest group to ever enter the workforce. Um, do, is there a certain sensibility about that uh, generation and that age group that, that you know, permeates Facebook? You know, I think Facebook is actually great for all generations. I think what makes uh, the current generation different from my generation, for example, is that they're willing to ask for what they want which I never was. You know, mm. my generation didn't ask for what they wanted. We just showed up at work and did what we were asked to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we found in our data, when we look internally at sort of what's important to people and, you know, what creates fulfillment, it's actually very similar across all generations. The difference is that, you know, the people who have recently come into the workforce have been very comfortable talking about it and asking for it, and that's really changed, I think, the way companies need to think about the value proposition they're providing. And I think if you look at the, the students who are in school now, down to middle school, so sort of the next tranche of folks who will be coming to us, mm -hmm. our summer interns, right. they're interested in even something a little bit different, which is something more focused on uh, social good and social entrepreneurialism and social mm -hmm. capitalism. And that's where our mission really, I think, yeah. helps us yeah. and puts us in a good position. Yeah. Is there something that's different about the company or the space the company is in that allows that to be true at Facebook? I think there are a couple of things. One, uh, the first is, of course, our mission, which is that we're a very mission-driven company to make the world more open and connected. And that's true across the family of apps and all of our products and everything it is that we're doing internally. And I think people really connect to that. Mm -hmm. I also think that you know, almost everybody has their own Facebook story or their own Instagram story or the reason that WhatsApp's important to them in their lives. And I think they really connect to that. I yeah. think that's a really important piece of it. Yeah. I think in addition to that, we're a strengths-based organization, which means we really do want people in roles that play to their strengths doing work they enjoy. Is that a thing, strengths-based organization, or is that uh, It's a thing that's not very common. Right, so tell me what that means. Uh, so being a strengths-based organization is a place where you are really looking to you know, put people in roles where they are doing work they enjoy that plays to their strengths. I think that's where you get outlier engagement. I think it's where you get outlier performance. And all of the data shows that as well. Mm -hmm. It's where you get the best teamwork. It's where you know people are able to do the best work of their lives. Mm -hmm. And we hope that we're able to create that for everyone yeah. who's working at Facebook. I'll give managers as an example. You know, there are lots of different ways to identify future managers in your organization. The way we do it is by asking people whether or not they want to be managers. Yeah. You know, I think your best managers are the people who actually want to manage. And for that reason, we've created a dual career track. You can either be an individual contributor or a manager all the way up through the organization. You don't have to become a manager uh, to be promoted or to move up or to continue learning. Yeah. And I think that's one example of being able to put people in roles that play to their strengths and interests. <clears throat> now, Facebook's been named consistently by lots of different organizations the best place to work. Can you describe what else makes Facebook, you know, sort of what's its secret sauce in terms of a place to work? What's its culture like? So I think the secret sauce of Facebook is the people and the mission and the way that those two things come together in a way that unites us uh, in a really powerful way. So I think you have you know, a lot of people who are very good at what they do, who are in roles that play to their strengths, who are doing work they enjoy with people they respect and that they learn from. And they're all doing it in service of the mission to mm -hmm. make the world more open and connected. In addition to that, we are a very open company. One of our core values is be open, which means that you show up on your very first day, we tell you absolutely everything that's happening in the company. There are no secrets about what's happening. You mm. learn, you see the product roadmap, you understand right away what the culture is. Um, you know, part of the thing that's great about the culture is this tremendous openness. Mm. In addition, we're really focused on moving fast. We're very focused on impact. So we really want everyone to be in a role that, that creates impact in the organization. And and yeah. I think people really feel that. Yeah. I imagine that people watching this, uh, they'd kill me if I didn't ask you this question, <laughs> which is uh, how, you know, how best to present yourself to, to be well received and potentially hired by a place like Facebook. Well, I do think we're looking for builders. So we're really looking for people. We're not looking at grades. We aren't looking at you know SAT scores. That was another thing that Google was very famous for for a long time was they had a GPA threshold. Right. You know? are, that's not Facebook. Right. <laughs> at Facebook, we're really looking for people who love to build. And what we find is that people who love to build, build. Mm -hmm. So they have side projects that they do at school or in addition to their, to their summer internship mm -hmm. or you know, they're in a role at another company, but they've also built an app on the side. 
or they have great examples of things they've built and done in their current roles mm -hmm. or in past roles. Yeah. And I think those are really those are really great ways to showcase uh, the builder mentality and the ability to learn. And once you get in there, one thing that I uh, read about in uh, in my research prior to talking to you was this. That, that, that something broke out on the internal networks of Facebook called, uh, it was like a hashtag, uh, FB family. Yes. What is that? So uh, hashtag FB family came out of actually um, an experience that a woman had a couple of years ago at Facebook where she became very ill and she needed to take some time away. And she, you know, one of the things about Facebook, of course, is that we use Facebook internally mm -hmm. every day, all day. Right. We have more groups than we have people. And uh, people are very active on it, and they share authentically. They really share a lot about themselves. She shared very openly on Facebook for all of us to see what her illness was and you know, what, her, what she'd planned for her course of treatment when she'd be back at work. And her colleagues and friends at Facebook sort of rallied around. And you know, the con there were hundreds of comments, and you know, people created a video for her that they then posted. It was sort of, um, it was to the song Happy. <laughs> and uh, you know, lots of different, uh, probably dozens, if not hundreds, of people were in the video, right. and people started tagging all of those videos and all of the comments. Hashtag FB family. Mm. I don't even know where it came from. I don't know right. who developed it at first. As, as, as it always is. But with it these caught fire. Right? Yes, yeah. it really became viral across the organization. And now, any time that you know something comes up where someone has something going on, or you're celebrating something that's happening in a friend or colleague's life. FB family. So it's like shorthand it's for it's the good stuff about the culture inside Facebook. It's, it kind of reflects, I think, how close we all are yeah. personally yeah. and how there are so many really strong friendships across the organization and how it really feels like your family. Yeah. Do you worry about that as you scale past 10,000 and then 15,000 employees? Like, is there, you know, this has always been a concern for a company that is, you know, Hacking into maturity, you know, and becoming, no matter what the law of large numbers say, you just can't grow as fast as you used to. So I've been asked this question since the very day I joined. <laughs> we're 500 people. What will it be like when we're 1,000? Right. We're 1,000. What will it be like when we're 2,000? And, you know, what I would say is every, the, the amazing thing about the Facebook culture is every single person owns the Facebook culture. Mm -hmm. So even in the room where we welcome new people every single Monday, there's a giant mural that says, this is your company now. And most of the orientation experience, the first two days, is about helping people understand what Facebook is. What is the culture? What's it like to work here? You know, what's our roadmap? How do you sort of engage and contribute to that culture? Mm -hmm. And then everybody walks away owning the culture. And so it isn't that we have a culture team or one person who owns the culture. It's really a 15,000 people around the world who feel yeah. like they own the culture. And they contribute to it all the time. And yeah. again, that's where using Facebook internally really, really helps us. Yeah. Let me ask you a few things about policy. Uh, I almost feel like it's difficult to ask this after the election. Because you know? <laughs> no one knows what the policies are going to be. Because we'll, we'll learn in a tweet. Um, but uh, you've had some sort of industry-leading approaches to policy. Um, parental leave is a, is a good example of, of that. Um, do you think that some of these approaches that Facebook has taken are going to spread throughout corporate America? Or do you, is that a hope that you have? I really hope that uh, you know some of the things we're doing work well enough that maybe it will inspire other organizations. Yeah. But that isn't our primary goal. Our yeah. primary goal is to do the things that are right yeah. for Facebook. Yeah. This relates to, to a concept that I've been studying also, which is unconscious bias. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, it, look, Facebook is part of the transparency movement where you release diversity figures. And they just don't look good, um, not just Facebook, everybody. In the, in the tech industry, and it's really been the industry that, that industry that's led by example by mm -hmm. saying, "Here are our numbers; they're not very good. We're aware of the problem, and we're working on it." Right? Um, but part of the problem is this idea of unconscious bias. Is this something that you, that as a manager of people at Facebook, you train into we or do. talk about? Like, yes. Tell, tell me more about. We're that. very aware of unconscious bias. Uh, we actually so unconscious bias, of course, is something everyone has. 
uh, the people who have probably the most are the people who don't think they have any. <laughs> 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 and so one of the most important things is just helping people understand what it is and right. what it means and how it impacts decisions you make in daily life. Can you define it for me? Just, uh, you know, you probably thought about it a bit more than I have. You know, I think it's the, I think it's just the stereotypes that sort of, you know, are deep in your unconscious right. that underlie, the, you know, it used to, it used to help people identify when there was a lion coming to attack you so right. that you knew to run right away. And of course, over time, that's not what we use it for anymore, at least in big cities. And, uh, and you know, now I think it still, it still lives right there under the surface. Mm -hmm. And it can, be, it can be informed or impacted by, you know, lots of things that have happened in your life or by the media or by, you know, the images that you see out in the world. Yeah. And part of what we've tried to do is to help people at Facebook understand that everybody has it. We tried to define it for them. We created a class. Uh, we did not make it mandatory, but 100% of our senior leadership and more than 70% of the company have all been through it, wow. including all the new people. And, uh, and in fact, they're asking for even more of it because it's been pretty helpful. And we do see behavioral change. Yeah. So for example, I'll often have women tell me that you know, they're in a meeting with men in the room uh, where they may be the only woman in the room, and they'll be cut off in the middle of a, you know, something that they're trying to say. And what happens now is uh, some of the, one of the men in the room will say, hang on, I'd like to hear what she said. Let's let mm -hmm. her finish. And they're actually interrupting the interrupters. And that's exactly a concept that we cover in the class. Yeah. So, you know, it's something that I think is really important for organizations to understand. Yeah. In fact, there was so much demand for it that we actually taped it and, you know, recorded it and made right. it available publicly. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. in. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much for having me. The Nuco Shift Dialogues are produced in partnership with the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center, connecting entrepreneurs from all walks of life.